Uh, number two, <clears throat> basically, you're trying, so in, in physics, P dot is negative del V. Uh, classical physics. Just, and you're like, well, what is that? Well, this here is some of the forces, and this here is MA. This is Newton's second law. Okay, in longhand notation, which is what number two parts A and B are about. <clears throat> and then what you're trying to prove in quantum is that it works in quantum too, where uh, d by dt of the expectation value of momentum is negative uh, d by dx of v. So this is the same statement only in, so d by dt means dot d by dx is one dimension of the three-dimensional spatial derivative. And so parts A and B just ask you to prove that this is Newton's second law, or show it. Part C is where you actually have to do this. And you, so you start, so the nice, so many physics problems do this. They say, here's where you start, and here's where you end. Now your job is to fill out everything in between, and there's like two pages in there. And, and so th that's, that's the question, is start here, end here, fill in the gap. <coughs> and so you, you just, uh, we kind of went through some of this, a lot of this in class actually, uh, but it's, it's a little bit messier with this version. So you have to remember that this expectation value of P means integral over all space, psi star, h bar over i, d by dx of psi dx. It's on the equation sheet. Uh, Yep, so this little piece right here, that's p hat. Mm -hmm. And now, so this is what p, this is what expectation value of momentum means. It means this in quantum mechanics. But now you're asked to take time derivative of that. So you, to, uh, time derivative of this means time derivative of all this. When we do that, that comes inside the integral as a partial derivative, which you then have to apply product rule to. So then that's going to blow up into two pieces. Does that make sense, Jared? Mm -hmm. When that blows up into two pieces, <coughs> then you're going to use Schrodinger equation and blow it up into four pieces. Except one of those has a product rule, so you really get five. And then you have to step through each piece. I'm waving my hands real quick because it's like, oh yeah, it's just five pieces. But there's a bunch of them. There's a lot of details there. Who's got another? I, I know that it doesn't mean a whole lot till you get into it, Jared, so I'll, I'll quit rambling about it. Only on this. That's right. That's right. So the, the order of this is very important. It's always psi star, your operator, and the thing that gets operated on is over here. Yeah. What other questions do you all have? Mm. Yeah, the uncertainty principle just says that uh, <coughs> the expectation value of x, I'm sorry, the uh, standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of momentum is always less than or equal to h bar over 2. 
And this is a certain uncertainty principle. Or is it greater than? I think it's less than. What's it, what's, how's it? <coughs> greater than or equal to. It's on the inside cover of the book. There we go. Um, so, so basically, you just need to find the uncertainty. The uh, what? What is uh, standard deviation? What is that a reference to? What does that mean? Say it again. It's exactly right. It's kind of the this mathematical term that we we don't have a very good English language for it, but we just call it. How spread out is that bell curve? And. Uh, the best you can do when you, the product of those two is, that's a pretty small number, but all the same, it's still, you can't do better than that. So if you know one really well, then you can't know the other one real well. So if you have a large standard deviation, does that mean that you have more points spread out from average? Yes, if your standard deviation is big, that means your bell curve is real spread out. If your standard deviation is small, then you're going to have a, 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 high, a sharp peak. So I, I, that, is that enough of information, Will? Okay. Quick question on question number one. Uh -huh. I know it has to do with the fact that psi is, a psi is affected by x and t. I just don't know. Oh, 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 you're talking about the derivative question, right? Yeah. Well, the <coughs> or the integration by parts question? So the question is, <coughs> why can't you do IBP on step one? And uh, let, me remind, let, me remind, let me get it straight in my head. It's d by dt of, what is it, psi squared now here? Right? Oh, there's an X in front of this? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, well, so let's, let's try it. See how this works. Okay. So uh, let's take this piece to be our derivative piece right there. So we'll do, we'll start with an X, take derivative, get one, take derivative, get zero. Okay, that's good. Now we'll take this piece here, this d by d t of psi star psi, and we're going to take integral of that. Integral with respect to what? X. And then notice here we had to take derivative with respect to the thing we're integrating with. And here you have to take integral with the same thing. And so when we do integral of this, we look at that and say, I don't know. What, is, what do you do with a dt, a, deriv a time derivative in a space integral? You, you can't do anything with it. Now, if this was, if, if, and it's not, but if this was an x, oh, we could do something with that, right? Integral of that, well, that would just be psi star psi, right? But it's not that. So we're left here with... We're just stuck right here. We can't do the next step. We're dead in the water. <clears throat> and so that's why you can't do this, right? This step is because you can't, you can't do this side of your integration by parts. Does that answer your question, Jared? So we've got to get rid of that d by dt. And that's why you've got to do that step that we do in the notes with the Schrodinger's equation, which you also have to do in number two. What other questions do y'all have? So is it going to be more 
normalizing or is it going to be visualizing using <coughs> Normalizing will be on the test. More like normalizing is just something you need to be able to do. Is there going to be a lot of uh, like, uh, expectation values? Expectation values are need to be on the test. They're both fair game. <laughs> How long are you making this test? Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to make it an hour test. So I can't give you a question like number two that takes an hour and a half to do one problem. So can you answer whether or not it's going to be like all computational? Uh, there will definitely be a fair amount of concept. There, there's a lot of concept with this class. So there will definitely be some concept type questions on here. Um, with you know like short paragraph answers or some one sentence answers or something like that, but there will also be some work them out kind of questions. But not any, like, there might be, but they'll be shortish. Like I, I can't give you an hour and a half derivation on an hour test. With that said, a lot of, now that you've been through a lot of these derivations, the first time you go through them, they're going to take you an hour and a half, two hours, three hours. But now that you know how to do them, you could probably go through it a lot quicker. What other questions do you all have? How about, because it's going to be a lot to send it to you, like, it, like it, to scan in, you know, 10 pages for you and, you know, all the, I put them in the box outside that's what I was thinking, if I could just put them in a box outside my office and y'all come, come by and pick them up. <coughs> okay, so normalization. Do you have a wave function in mind? Um, would it be okay if we went through four part A? Kind of. Sure. Okay. What's the wave function? That would be I sequence to capital A times E to the power of negative small. Oh, wait. So let's start by rewriting this. A E negative A M X squared over H bar times E to the negative I A T. Does that make sense? And now we can find psi star, right? And this is, should I make this a capital psi or a lowercase psi? Why is it capital? Because it's, it's got x and t in it, right? So these, this is all capital size. <coughs> so what's going to change when I write psi star? 
just that sign right there, right? Everything else stays the same. So this is going to be a e negative a m x squared over h bar e to the plus i a t. Okay, so now we're going to do the normalization condition. So we're going to say integral over all space of psi star psi dx equals 1. Now, notice what happens when we multiply psi star times psi. We're, so this piece times this piece is going to give us an a squared. This piece times this piece is going to give us two of those, e to the negative 2a mx squared over h bar. <coughs> but what's going to happen to this piece? This thing times this thing. Yeah, I'm going to end up with this plus the negative of that. I mean, plus this piece, which is negative. So, all, so this starring trick always makes your psi real. The psi squared is always real. That's what it does for you. Does that make sense? Okay, so now, and this has to equal 1. Oops. There we go. Okay. So I can pull the a squared out front. And let's do a u sub here. <coughs> so u is going to be equal to... 2am over h bar times x squared. So du dx is going to be equal to uh, 4am over h bar x. So dx is equal to um, du over 4 a m x with an h bar upstairs. And our limits, infinity, when I plug in infinity here in u space, oh, that's still going to be infinity. And negative infinity will still be negative infinity. <coughs> so now when we write our integral, I'll put my a squared out front. I'm still going to have negative infinity to positive infinity. And now, instead of, oh, wait a second. Ah, that won't work, will it? That worked really well with the x, expectation of value of x. It won't work on this. U sub, bad choice. But this is one of the integrals in the CRC, right? That sounds about right. OK. By the way, that u sub, you're going to need it later when you find expectation value of x. But it doesn't work for this. So here's the trick that we're going to use to do this one. <coughs> this is going to be 2a squared. Notice there's not a 2 there, but I'm going to make it a 2 because I'm going to go from 0 to infinity instead of negative infinity to positive infinity because this is a symmetrical integral e to the negative 2am x squared over h bar dx and what, is, what does the integral say? The integral table? This is number what? 643? It says integral e to the negative a squared x squared dx is equal to what? Is that what it says? <coughs> and so, you know, this, this is, uh, you know, we don't have to call this, we can call it alpha just to keep it straight. And so all of this 
is alpha squared. Does that make sense? And this is from zero to infinity. <coughs> so now you're going to get 2a squared here. And this integral becomes this. So it's going to become square root of pi over 2 alpha, which is square root of 2am over h bar. There you go. And all this equals 1. And now you solve it for a. Does that help, Zach? Yeah. Um, I, was, I was looking at that integral up there. I was like, how the world? Yeah. Try use substitution that messes it up. Yeah, yeah. Look it up on the integral table. Okay. CRC is a useful thing. One half kx squared. Okay, I thought it was that, but my brain is like. <coughs> like no. For the potential energy of the gravity, do you want us to, instead of a, make it an x? Yeah. Okay. Either that or call it y, and then take derivative with respect to y one way or the other, tomato, tomato. Did y'all get to watch those videos that I sent? Well, you start, supposed to start halfway through. I, I sent the time. I don't remember. Because, yeah, you're right. We covered the first half of that, but the second half we hadn't covered yet. Did I tell you about the, I, I learned about a new tool that exists, it's called Swivel. Y'all maybe heard of it, but yeah, it's like, a, it's like a tripod with a little remote in it. And you wear the other end and it just tracks the, the little thing that you wear. And the thing you wear is a microphone also, so you don't have to have the cord. And if I write over here, it just follows you all the way around the classroom. It's beautiful. A robot. I want it. $1,500 plus you can't use your camera you have to buy Is there a camera? Well, no it's a, it, they want you to use an iPad so you have to buy an iPad <sighs> sadness <clears throat> oh well I wish I'd anyway what does it mean by the meaning of the two equations you well, it's asking you to talk about how Newton's second law. Oh. Those, those, those equations that you get are the net force in those situations. Where are you at? I'm trying to find this thing, and I wrote it down. I wrote down the right integral from the CRT yesterday, and then I erased it. So I kind of like traced over what I had. But <laughs> and I can't find it in here. Oh, okay. So I know that is right, what I have where it says from CRC, but the denominator is wrong because I can't see what I erased. You want to go get my CRC? That would be nice. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me go grab the CRC. I'll be back in a second.
was stuck on the easy stuff. I didn't really write that explanation out too well. Oh, well, you didn't? But great. That's what I have. Questions yet? I'm confused on what you mean by it's equal to the sum of the forces. Is it just oh. equals the Well I know when I break it down, I know it I know what the derivative equals. Okay, look. If you've got a spring with a mass on it, and I grab it and pull it over here. Let go. What's the potential energy of that? Gravity and then the, um, no, it's on. It's on the table. It's not going to go down. Uh huh. It's just one half k x squared, right? Well, if I let go of this, what's the net force on it? Which is? And what's the spatial derivative negative of V of X? So what is negative KX? The net force. Does that make sense? What's a wave function? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, define where-ish a little bit better, but yeah, you want to talk about... We, 
talk about what we know. <clears throat> so what is the wave function? Uh, it's a little bit descriptive of the location of the particle. But really, if you, you have to square it, and it'll tell you probability density. Where it's most likely to exist. I don't know, it's questions like that. How about, uh, we talked about orthodox position and agnostic position, and wasn't there another one? The realist position. I like the realist position. Too bad it's wrong. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. There's stuff like that. Those are good concept questions. Um, Should we cover new ground, or should I just let you all study? I know what you're going to say. Never mind, that was a bad question. I shouldn't have asked that question. Never <laughs> Students never say, please give me more information now. <clears throat> but you should. That's what you're paying for. <laughs> This class is very different the way it speaks of, like, we don't even speak of momentum in the same way. Because, like, when you said define a wave function, I thought, like, I could define a wave function. I don't think you want to define a wave function. Right. You want to define a quantum wave function. Right. Ta speak of everything in terms of quantum language, quantum understanding. Well, we've got half an hour. I hate to just waste a good half hour. That's a lot of time. <clears throat> Did was that a hand up for a question or was that a hand up for Food? I haven't either. <laughs> Leave me alone. Let me. <laughs> so when you're finding the expectation value of momentum squared, yeah, you square the operator, which means you have a second derivative. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And so you have that second derivative operating on psi. So yeah, the expectation of mom. Uh, of momentum squared is integral over all space psi star times negative h bar squared. Where'd the negative sign come from? From the i. That i downstairs squared turns into a negative sign, right? And then you have a second derivative of position operating on psi dx. Does that answer your question, Tori? Yes. So you're going to be handing out those equation sheets on Monday? Well, they're on the class website, so, so you can download it. So yeah, you should download it yourself before class. Okay. So Do you, you turn it out and bring it yeah. on Monday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then for all the operators, we just need to remember each operator just 
Yeah. All, the way you handle any operator is you stick it in right there between psi star and psi, and it operates on psi. So just each operator just operates on psi. Yeah. You know, the operator of x hat is real easy because it doesn't actually operate on anything, like not like a derivative does. And that's why we can put it before That's right. So x, you can, you can pull that in front. It doesn't matter. But th just to stick with the pattern, put it in between. <coughs> and later pull it out if you need to. Yeah? Well, for the test, um, I don't have a, I don't have a, what's it called, a CRC. Oh, yeah. So, um, uh, like, do I need an integral table? Uh, there, there's a bunch of integrals on there that are probably We'll probably cover most bases. I'll try to go through the test, and if there's something else that you need, I'll try to put it on the test. If there's not, you can ask me in the test and say, do I need this integral? Do I do <laughs> um, And I'll either look it up and tell it to you, or I'll say, you don't need the integral table. You can do that one on your own, or something like that.